All right, so in this video, we're going to talk about some Factory Talk ME, which is the machine edition side of things, which is panel views, panel view pluses, panel view uh, performance. We're going to talk about how to make the alarming a lot simpler and a lot easier so that you don't constantly have to edit those. You don't constantly have to edit your HMI archive or your project and then make new runtimes and then download to each panel view. You can actually do this one time and actually go through and have like a, a something that you can edit just from the PLC file. So it takes you literally seconds instead of an hour or two to do so. So let's talk about how this setup is done. Um, we come in here and we, we look at, we're in our project, right? So we're in our machine edition project. Okay, just keep that in mind. And we go to the alarm setup. Now, in alarm setup, you have a couple different options. Well, I won't say a couple, you have a lot of different options. When it comes down to it, you have triggers. Um, I have all my triggers in here already. So I've already pre-set up everything. Um, again, just to save time, again, if I were to show you this step-by-step, step, it would probably take hours. So just explaining this simple process will help you understand, okay? Just know that these are triggers and each one of these is a word and it's 32 bits. Okay, so 32 bits and I have four, uh, 14 words. So, are 15 words, zero through 15, 14. So, if you do the math on that, that's 32 bits times 15 words, that's 480 80, uh, alarms that I can have, or 480 triggers that I can have. Now, the key to this is, if I'm on any one of these, then instead of the default setting a value, I set it bit. So, each one of these is set at bit level, so that I can go into the message side of things and then call that and then trigger a whatever trigger I want to use for that. So if it's if it's the first uh, word and it's trigger one, then it will display this text, okay? Now the text again, when it comes down to it, instead of like you writing a text down here, instead of saying something like alarm, alarm one, <clears throat> instead of writing that and writing all your text out, if you did like strings right here, and I'll show you how to do this, right? So I'll, I'll show you, I'll add one real quick. So we'll go in here to 11 and then say, this is a value of five. And then right here, our next one that we wanna choose, I'm using a string. I'm using a string from my PLC. So basically I just trigger that string when I trigger the alarm and then life is good. Now that's done through this that's done through the HMI. So you don't have to do that through your PLC. That communication path, that communication trigger point will automatically pull that, that it will read from that, that string when that trigger happens. So when trigger 15, uh, uh, 1115, when that happens, it will automatically pull the string that I put in here. You don't have to have any PLC logic for that, okay? So just keep that in mind. So let's go ahead and insert our next one which is going to be 57, all right, 357. So we'll add in our next one. And you can see that's how easy it is to add one in. So rather than having a, you know, your messaging in your message block over here, rather than having just text, have that as a string that points back to your PLC. So let me go ahead and run the application so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. And I'm going to test the application. What that's going to do is test it on my actual uh, computer right here instead of the panel view. It's going to look exactly the same. So just keep that in mind. It's just not on the panel view itself. Again, instead of having the uh, camera point to the panel view, you can actually see it running. And this is what I use all the time for testing anyway. So what this does is it starts up and it runs the runtime and to be able to shut this down is cool it's it's just control x and you can shut it down it does tell you that type x to shut down um, but it's control x so just keep that in mind <clears throat> um now the text right here you can see you can easily see that the uh alarming right the the messaging that i have the the strings that we have in place are going to give me what i'm i'm actually whatever the alarm is so if i come over here and trigger let's just say 314 and I go over to my logic and I go to 314 and I say okay well I have a connection fault okay so let's go over here and trigger connection fault and let's go back so you see it's, it see it says uh, Ethernet PowerFlex VFD 
B821 uh, uh, connection loss. Now I can easily reset that and it goes away. I can go to my alarm summary and then go to alarm history and I still see it. So that's how that works. And it's pointed to this through the actual back of the alarm setup. Because the way that conductivity path is done is this, this trigger right here is bit level and you've already established, right? We've already established that if this, this word at this level, this bit level, then I want this text, okay? So just keep that in mind, right? So that's how that conductivity is working. That's, that's how, there's nothing inside the PLC logic that's triggering this besides this bit being trigger, triggered that's aliased, right? It, that bit being triggered and then it's going to call for the string that I already have. So you can just have, you can put all your strings in here and name them whatever you want to. You can name them, you know, uh, factory talk ME alarm string and then come over here and, and have, I, I have 480 alarms, which is zero through uh, 479. You can see that. And so I'm matching it up to my actual 480 alarms that I have available that I can use in my words that I've already put up in my, my factory talk ME system. So just keep that in mind in my application. I already have that set up, but adding one in here, say if I wanted to actually trigger, let's just say another one and just come up here and save yourself some time. What I can do is I can come over here and say alarm test. Okay. And if I put alarm test in there, I just type it in. Okay. And then I go over here to 15. Let's just actually go back to the PLC and I go over here and trigger 15, which is the very next one. Then you'll see that it comes in here and it says alarm test. You see, it says alarm test right here and I can hit reset and have that right there. So now what if I said, okay, well, I want to change that text name. What if I want to change that text name? Cause it's not alarm test anymore. It's alarm, uh, conveyor not running something simple right so we just come over here and you can see that it does do the hyphens it does do the, the everything that it's supposed to let's trigger that again and see what it does okay so we'll trigger that again and we see that it gives me alarm conveyor not running so instead of having your text what i'm trying to get at here and you can easily see that is what i'm trying to get at is this alarm setup right here if you use a string in the messaging instead of a just a normal text, right? So if you can type in normal text down here if you want to, but if you use a string instead of normal text, then it will save you a lot of time later when you go to change or edit or do anything with the alarm structure, right? So if you wanted to add an alarm, you can add an alarm. I always build in a lot more alarms than I'm going to use. That way the person behind me can always go in and add alarms, edit alarms, do whatever they want to just via the PLC file instead of the actual um, HMI, right? So they don't, they don't have to constantly go back and edit the runtime and download the runtime to this, this panel view, this panel view, and this panel view, say there's three of them being used, or if there's just being one, it's not that bad, but it's still, still going to cost you about an hour, hour and a half, maybe two hours to do that work when you can save yourself some time, do this on the front end, and then go ahead and change it literally in five seconds. Like, let's just say now I want to take, to take this back because I'm not actually using it. So now what's going to happen is if I trigger, um, if I trigger the bit 15, nothing is going to happen. I mean, it's basically going to, it's going to pop up, but it's not going to have an alarm text because I eliminated the alarm text. So you see how simple and easy that was, right? And I can keep that AFI out so that I don't use it inside of my PLC logic. So it's all a simple PLC transition instead of constantly having to edit your uh, factory talk ME application and then download, making a runtime and downloading to it. So hopefully that will save you some time when it comes to alarming. Um, I do know that this has greatly helped me with alarming. It's greatly helped, you know, the people behind me when it comes to editing things. Um, you know, like I said, the purpose of programming is to make sure you accomplish the goal and you accomplish the task, right? The scope of work, you make it reliable and then you make it easy and cut like user friendly for the person behind you. 
And that's the goal behind all of, of programming. If we can all work on that goal and we can all work towards that, again, when it comes to manufacturing, we can all better ourselves and better the world around us and better each other at the same time. So with that said, hopefully you learned a lot from this video. We'll see you guys on the next one.